Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a full featured online store and e-commerce website with OpenCart, which is an open source platform. Now I know I don't have to say this to my most of my subscribers, but there's a lot of paid hosted e-commerce programs out there, and I would definitely advise you not to fall for that crap. Most of the time you don't have access to the source code, which makes it almost impossible to customize it and make it original. Uh, an example of this would be something like Wix or Squarespace or something like that. There's plenty of good open source platforms out there. There's OpenCart, Magento, uh, PrestaShop, and they're all free. Not only that, they come with their own community where you can get support and you can get answers and so on. All right, you don't have to just deal with one company like you would with Wix. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to download OpenCart. We're going to actually upload it to a live web host with a domain name, and we're going to set everything up. All right. Um, now, as far as web hosting goes, I would suggest InMotion hosting to for any shared hosting. Um, I've used them for years, and they've been just awesome. And if you're looking to get shared hosting, you can see how cheap it is, $7.99 per month, you know, which is nothing. And you get a full cPanel, you get full access, uh, and unlimited databases, and, and so on. I do have a link, an affiliate link in the description, so if you guys are going to purchase a package, I'd appreciate it if you could go through that link. All right, so before we get started, I'm going to show you what we're going to be building, which is uh, a website called DJ Outlet, which is uh, uh, an online shop that sells DJ equipment. Now, this is actually the default open cart theme. I just edited the CSS a little bit to change up the colors. And I also created this custom logo, which isn't that great, but, uh, you know, it makes it more custom. And uh, I'll also show you how to do that in Photoshop. OK, uh, I'm going to include all the files or a link to all the files. Uh, in the description so you'll be able to get the logo if you don't want to create it yourself all right so we have this uh, slideshow here which I think is really cool you don't have to use it but uh, you can It'll, it's a way to showcase certain products um, and then down here we have the four products that I created I basically just took the info from Amazon all right and I'm not gonna go through the entire front end right now because I don't want it to take too long but just just to give you the gist of it um, we can add products to a wish list for if we want to save them for later. Now if I try to do that now it's going to tell us to log in or create an account. There's a full authentication system for customers and they can log in, they can track their orders, they can um, you know contact support and all that stuff. So let's say we want to look at this here, this uh, DJ controller. It has a product details page and you can upload multiple images. All right, and you can scroll through those images and there's a description you can add related products uh, reviews okay customers can write reviews and let's see they can share listings there's just a ton of stuff here now if we wanted to purchase this we could add it to our cart and up here you'll see one item if we click on that it'll show us kind of a drop down of the cart and if we go to view cart we can see the full uh, the full cart all right with all our products we can change the quantities we can remove them uh, there's even coupon codes we can use. I think I created one called Brad. So see how it's $99. If I apply the coupon, now down here, it's 89. It's a 10% coupon. All right, we can estimate shipping. We can even add gift certificates. All right, so there's, there's not too much that you can't do with this platform. Uh, now, I'm not going to go through the whole checkout, but I'll show you some of it. So you can either make customers register for an account or you can enable guest checkout where they don't have to actually create an account but I would probably suggest that you disable guest checkout just so you get all that info and so your customers have a way to track everything and so on it might you know it might eliminate some confusion for the future uh, and then once you do that they can enter their ship it, their address details and all that um, I'm not going to go through this entire thing uh, but you see they'll check they'll uh, pick delivery details delivery method uh, payment method I think I have PayPal enabled and also COD or uh, uh, cash on delivery and then they can just check out all right and they'll get an email and, and all that stuff everything's taken care of <clears throat> all right so I think that that's all I'm gonna do for now for showing you the front end um, for now uh, you can see there's also the categories in the menu here so this is exactly what we'll be building. 
Now, I'm not going to go through the back end right now, but it's it's very intuitive and very customizable. So to get started here, you need obviously uh, hosting. If you don't want to upload this onto a live host, I would suggest XAMPP, which I'm sure many of you have used before. Uh, basically, it gives you an Apache server on your local machine. It gives you PHP. Uh, and by the way, OpenCart is a PHP platform. Um, and it also gives you MySQL. So you can use that. But I wanted to kind of do, you know, I wanted to build a, a live application. I don't do that too often. All right. So this is my cPanel for in motion hosting. If you use something like HostGator uh, or uh, GoDaddy, uh, they also have cPanel that you can use. And it should look very similar to this. So we need a database to store everything, user info, product info, it all has to go somewhere. So we're going to use a MySQL database and cPanel makes it really easy to create. OK, so if we go to databases and we go to uh, let's do MySQL database wizard. So we're going to create a database here, let's say um, we'll just call it call it DJ outlet. And click next step. And we're going to have to create a user. I'm going to do the same thing. DJ outlet. Actually, we can't do that many characters. Let's just do I'll just do Brad. All right. And it's going to be prefixed with your domain if you're using cPanel. Uh, and by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it, but we're using the domain codedemos.com. All right. So password. Uh, let's see. I'll just do. I'm going to delete all this after anyways. So let's go ahead and create Oh, password strength must be at least 20. All right, so let's do ABC123 exclamation. ABC123 exclamation and create user. All right, now right here we need to pick the uh, permissions for the user. I'm just going to click all privileges and click next step. And we should be all set. So we have this as the user and this as the database. Now, if you're using XAMPP or WAMP or something like that, um, you'll create a database probably through PHP MyAdmin, uh, which is also available for cPanel. So if we go back <clears throat> and we go to databases PHP MyAdmin, it should redirect us. Okay, you can see we have the database right here Code Demo DJ Outlet. And it's empty right now. All right. When we go through the installation of OpenCart, it's going to fill everything up. OK, it's going to create all the tables and so on. So now that we have the database, we can go to OpenCart.com and go ahead and download everything. So say free download and click on download now. And it's going to give you a zip package. OK, the current version is 2.3.0.2. Yours may be different, but everything should still be the same. All right. Now I already downloaded it. I should have it in my downloads right here. All right. So I'm not going to do that. And then you want to upload those to your web host. OK. And the easiest way to do that is through FTP. So if you're using cPanel, you should have already have an FTP account with the same um, the same details as your, you know, your username for your cPanel and so on your password. But you can create more FTP accounts if we go to right here, FTP accounts. And um, yeah, you can see I already have uh, an FTP account with the actual um, details of cPanel. But you can create another one here. For instance, you could say Brad at codedemos.com or whatever your domain is, password, and so on. OK, once you create that, you need a way to uh, log in through FTP. And I would suggest. FileZilla. So if you go to uh, FileZillaProject.org, you want the client. OK, you can download that. So I already have that open. I'm going to bring that down. I'm already logged into Code Demos and I've already uploaded what I need to. All right. So what you need to upload, let's go ahead and open up that zip package that we downloaded. OK, and we'll just uh, let's go ahead and extract that. So I'll take everything out. 
All right, now this includes everything, all the source code. You don't want to upload everything. What you want to upload to your host is everything that's in this upload folder. So if we open that up, this includes all the actual files that we need. Now, this is very important. You see this config dist file file. There's one here. There's also one in the admin folder. You need to rename these. Okay, you need to just take off the dash dist. So it's just config.php. All right, same thing in the admin folder. I'm just going to remove the dist. All right. And I actually didn't do that to the files that I uploaded, so I'm going to just overwrite those. All right. So, once you're logged in to your host via FTP, you want to just grab everything here in the upload folder and just drag it over and drop it in and it'll all upload. All right. You can see I didn't rename my config files, so what I'm going to do is just grab this one. and bring it over. Oops. Okay, let's reload. Okay, and now I'm just going to delete the dist. Okay, and then in the admin folder, same thing. Let's go over here and bring over config PHP and I'm going to delete the dist. All right. So now that everything is uploaded and the config files are renamed, we can go ahead and install it. So let's close this up and we're going to go back to the web browser. Uh let's see which one are we at here. All right. And we're going to go to well, I'm going to go you want to go to your domain name, but I'm going to go to codedemos.com. All right. And it's going to start the install. It should be redirected to install/index.php. All right, so this is just the 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 license and so on. So we'll click continue. And then it's going to run a check on everything. It's going to check your PHP version, it's going to check some of the PHP config options, uh, and you can see everything's okay if you have these green checks. Now, if you didn't rename the config file right here, you're going to get um it's not going to say writable, it'll say error or something like that or uh permissions denied. All right. but we did rename it so we're that everything's okay all the directories is okay so we should be all set to click continue and then here we need to put in the parameters of our database so if you're using uh xamp or something like that you're probably using the root user uh so you want to keep that and then put in your password we're using live hosting here so i'm going to grab the username for the password copy that and put that right in there All right, and this is going to be local host in, you know, 99% of uh, of all cases. All right, and then let's grab the database name and put that in there. Uh right right here. And then we're going to put the password for the uh database, which is abc123 exclamation. And then down here, we want to create a, a an admin account for our system. So I'm just going to leave admin as the username and I'll just put that for the password. All right, and then for the email I'm going to put my one of my actual emails. All right, and we'll click continue. And that should set everything up. And you can see it says don't forget to delete your installation directory. That's very important for security reasons. Go over to filezilla and go ahead and delete that install folder. All right, so that'll delete. And then we have the option to go to our shop and also the option to go to the back end. All right, so let's first go to the shop. And we have our front end, okay? And it by default it's going to give you all of the sample data. I'm going to show you how to delete that uh in a few minutes, but you can see we're actually at codedemos.com. We have a live e-commerce site on the internet, okay? With and we didn't even write any code. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the back end which you haven't even seen yet. And we you see it's we're at codedemos.com/admin, so we're going to put in our credentials. And let's see, it says install folder still exists because it's actually still deleting or it should be. And I think it's it's still going. Uh but that will disappear. There we go. 
and this is the dashboard okay so this will show you all your analytics your sales analytics your customers uh, customers that are online your sales all that stuff all your tracking data and over here we have all the different options I, I actually really like this interface um, so we have our categories and you can see there's all sample stuff here that's what you're seeing on the front end if we go to products uh, products all right so you can see these are all the different products that are on the front end there's a lot of sample data but I'm going to show you exactly how to get rid of all that and start from scratch and if we look at some of these other menu items we have uh, different attributes and options you can give products uh, let's take a look at that so attributes uh, now these are certain attributes for certain products for instance clock speed that's probably for um, you know one of the computers number of cores obviously these are uh, you can see they're in the group processor and we see our attri attribute groups right here so motherboard processor technical uh, we're gonna delete all these but just to show you, you can do it and you can set up different options uh, for uh, with a checkbox uh, checkboxes radios selects all that stuff uh, for instance if we go to let's go to Apple cinema 30 inch and over here they have some available options okay and these they just named it small medium large uh, which doesn't really make sense for this product but you can do that um, for instance if you wanted to choose a screen size or something like that all right and they have a bunch of stuff here I, th I think they have every type of option available just to show you how it works all right uh, but we're not going to use options for our products so uh, let's see what else we have manufacturers okay so you can create certain manufacturers they have all the tech companies and if we look at the front end if we look at the home page they have uh, a slider with all the different um, manufacturer logos okay so you can do that as well now when it comes to those sliders on the front end those are actually extensions if we go to extensions and there's a bunch of these already set up and you can also install other ones you can also purchase them there's premium extensions um, but if we go to modules and down here you'll see slideshow uh, on the home page and if we want to edit that we can do that from here all right uh, well actually the, the module itself we can edit from here okay so the width and the height and all that if you want to add images to the sliders then you will go to uh, let's see where is it what the hell is it layouts no banners and here it is home page slideshow if we click edit you can see we have the two images that are in that and there should also be the manufacturer slideshow right here with those images all right so uh, what else customers this is where all your customers will be listed all your orders everything uh, affiliates you even have a, a, a built-in affiliate system where you can get you can have users sign up and they can get paid for uh, for uh, sales on your on your site and what else settings users which includes the admin users and so on analytics I'm not gonna go through everything but there's just a ton so what I want to do now is start to delete the the sample data okay so there's a few areas we need to do that in. let's start with categories okay so we're just gonna check all of these and then go up here and click delete click OK and let's get these ones as well delete all right then we're gonna go to products and we want to delete all the products okay and let's see we want to go to uh, let's see products out attributes I'm gonna get rid of attributes okay and also attribute groups all right and now for the banners let's go to banners and I'm actually not gonna um, delete them I'm gonna just disable them all right so let's go to edit and we'll click disabled save same thing with this one and the manufacturers 
disabled. All right. And let's see what else. The manufacturers themselves. Let's go ahead and delete those. And I think we should be all set. So if we go back to the front end and reload, we basically have just an empty uh, an empty site here. Okay, all the functionality is there, but the products and all that stuff is gone. We're going to create new ones. So now what we're going to do is start to customize our store. So let's go back to the back end and we're going to go to. Uh, let's see, where is it? Settings right here. All right, now you can actually create multiple stores um, with the same platform. All right, but we're just going to use this default and click edit. So let's change some stuff up. We'll change the name to DJ Outlet. Meta tag description. Uh, we could say cheap and professional DJ equipment. Okay, keywords. So you could do like DJ equipment, um, turntables, mixers, and so on. Okay, and then the theme. There's only one by default, which is default, and you can either create a, a separate theme or you can buy a separate theme. You can get a free one. Oh, there's all different uh, options for that. And then default layout. We're just going to keep default. All right. Now, if we go to store, we're going to once again change this to DJ Outlet and the store owner. I'm going to put my name. Address, uh, we'll just say 55 Main Street, Boston, Mass. Uh, we don't need the geocode email. We're going to keep that telephone fax. Now, image right here, you probably want to change, but we're going to get to the images in a minute. All right, and then let's go to local and you can change up this stuff. Uh, I'm just going to leave it. Actually, let's change the country. Region state, uh, we'll say Massachusetts, and we'll leave the rest. You can change your currency and so on. All right, uh, option. So these are just different options. For instance, if you want to disable reviews, you can do that. Um, taxes, account information. We're just going to leave. Yeah, we're going to leave all that stuff. And then image. So your store logo. We'll take care of that in a second. Um, you can even link your FTP account, but we're going to leave all that stuff. You can put it into maintenance mode so that people can't, uh, you know, do anything on the front end. Uh, and then let's just go ahead and click save up here. All right. So let's go ahead and create a logo. So I'm going to go to Google Images. Let's just search for record. OK, and let's see. I want actually let's do record icon because there's a specific one I want, which is this one right here. All right. I'm just going to show you the process that I go through to create simple logos. Um, and like I said, the, it will be available in the downloads if you don't want to do this yourself. So let's go ahead and click save image as uh, and you can see I already have everything that I need in this folder. So uh, let's see. I'll just create another one, I guess. So let's say new folder and we'll say DJ outlet underscore images. All right. And then I'm going to create a folder in there called original. OK, and we're going to delete that into that file and I'm going to save it as record icon dot ping. OK, so we have that. So I'm going to open that in Photoshop. OK, and then let's see, we're also going to go back to our store and let's go to the front end and you see they have a logo here. I'm going to just go open image in new tab and let's go ahead and save this. All right, we'll save it in original as logo PNG. OK, so we're also going to open that in Photoshop. And then what I'll do is drag the record image into our logo here and I'll do control T and resize it. Okay. 
and we'll just yeah we'll just look that looks good and let's minimize that and then this open cart logo here I'm just gonna get rid of that so we'll just do delete and then let's put some text in here and I'm gonna say DJ outlet okay and the type of font this is is century gothic all right uh, but you can do whatever you'd like and then I'm just gonna change let's see I did the just the DJ and I'm gonna click up here into the color and just make that black and click OK all right and then I'm gonna select both of these layers and just kind of move it to the middle all right and that's our logo so let's go ahead and do save as and I'm not gonna do it in original we're gonna go here and save it as logo.png all right and then let's go back close that up and let's see we can close all these things up okay and then in the back end let's go back to settings and click edit and let's see we'll go to image and store logo we're gonna click edit and then this upload button right here and we're gonna grab our logo okay so it's been uploaded uh, oh, you know what? It's it's not showing because it's the same name as this, and that file didn't get deleted. So what I'll do is just go back and change the name. So let's see. Let's go down here, and I'm just going to change it from logo to, let's just say, DJ logo. All right, and then we'll upload that. All right, so it says success, and where the hell is it? There it is. All right, so we'll click that and now save. And then if we go to our front end and reload, there we go. So now we have a custom logo. Now, if we go back to our settings and go to store, you may want to change this as well. So what I'll do is uh, open in a new tab. And then we'll save that. Save it in original. Open that up in Photoshop. And then what we'll do is bring over uh, the record. So I'm just going to bring that in here and get rid of that layer underneath. We'll just delete that. And then let's save that right here. And we'll just save it as DJ logo uh, 100 times 100 and we'll save it Let's go back over here and we'll change this upload we want this one here oh I guess the logo PNG did actually change so for this we're gonna choose that record icon all right and we'll save now we can also change this up here to even customize the back end so if we say uh, open image in new tab and it's really small but we're going to save that into original let's save it as small logo okay and then we'll open that up and let's bring over this okay do a control t so we can resize All right, and then we'll get rid of the original layer. Let's save it. And we'll save it here as small logo PNG. And then uh, what we'll do is just replace it in our files. Okay, so actually I want that open again. We know that the location is in admin view image logo PNG. Now I'm doing it this way because I couldn't find an option to change it uh, in the back end so we're just going to replace the image so if we go to our files and go to admin and view image it's this logo PNG right here so let's go ahead and why does that keep closing oh there we go so we're gonna go and upload small logo PNG and then delete this 
logo png and then just rename this to logo dot png all right and then we'll go back to our store and reload okay we might have to clear the cache with control f5 and now you see we have our own logo all right just makes it a little more custom now i'm going to use manufacturers for our products as well so let's first create those and then we'll create our products okay so let's go to manufacturers and for the images i actually uh, prepared those already i'm not going to do that because it's just going to take too much time so you will have this uh, dj outlet images folder for download and i'm going to paste in a folder called manufacturers and we're going to use these for behringer newmark pioneer and sony okay so let's go ahead and add a new manufacturer and this will be let's say newmark and seo url you want to fill that out as well so they can just go to you know slash newmark and see all those images and let's see we're gonna upload it so let's say upload and manufacturers and i'm just going to grab all of these and click open all right so let's choose the new mark one and save all right and then we'll do the same for the other three so this will be sony Okay, let's choose that and save. Okay, let's choose, let's add another one. This will be Behringer. I'm not even sure if that's spelled right, but that's fine. All right, so let's see right here and save. And then we just want to add Pioneer. All right, so now we have our manufacturers. Now we're also going to want to create uh, some categories. So let's go to Categories. And let's click Add New. So this is going to be DJ controllers and for for a description I'm just going to go to lorem ipsum or uh, lipsum.com and just grab a little bit of text. So we'll just grab like a, a sentence or two. Copy that and let's put that here. Now as far as uh, meta tag title we're going to use the same as the category name. And then you can put a description and stuff if you want. And then let's go to data. And this is where we can put the image. So I also have um, a folder called products in the images. Let me just paste that in. Okay, so products. And these are all the products. Again, you'll have the link to download these in the description. So we're going to use um, just each product for the category image as well. So let's say image. And let's go ahead and just upload all of those product images. Oops. All right, so we get success. And let's grab one of these DJ controller images. Now, top, this is if you want to add this category to the top menu, and I do, so I'm going to just check that off. All right, and you can change the sort order as well. And we don't need anything in design, so that should be good. Let's go ahead and save. And now if we go to our front end and reload, we have our category, DJ controllers. Click that, and we have that info we just added. So let's add a couple more categories. So this is going to be turntables. And again, I'll just grab some text. And let's go to images. And we'll grab this top and save. 
All right, and then we're going to have one more category, which is going to be headphones. Okay, and we'll add the image. Let's do that. Top. Save. Okay, so now we have our three categories. So now it's time to add some products. So let's go over to products and let's click new. Now for the text, I'm going to be just pasting it in. You guys can copy it if you want. Uh, and then let's see description. We'll just grab a paragraph. Okay, meta tag title is going to be the same as the title. All right, and let's see for the model. I guess this doesn't really have a model number, so I'll just make one up. We'll just say X100. And then for the SKU, let's do 001. And let's see the quantity that we have. Let's say we have 200 of these. And there's all types of options. I'm not going to go through every single one. You can also put all the weight info and stuff so it calculates the shipping. And then let's see links manufacturer. This is going to be new mark categories. This is going to be DJ controllers. Store is always going to be default related products. You can add if but we don't have any yet. And you can even add downloads. For instance, the manual or something like that. All right, we're not going to use attributes or anything like that. Uh, let's see. Oh, I don't think I put the price. So if you go to data, you want to put the price in. All right, and then let's see. You can apply discounts. It's just a lot, guys. Uh, image, we're going to just add that, uh, this right here. And then we can add additional images. So if we click right here. Let's let's throw these two in there as well. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and save. All right. So let's go to the front end. Now, if we go to the home page, it's not going to show by default because the home page is actually a module. Uh, if we go to DJ controllers, you'll see it. But let's add it to the home page. So we need to go to uh, where is it extensions and then we're going to choose modules and go down to featured and this home page right here. So we'll click edit and for products we're going to choose that product. OK, and we'll do let's do limit eight. All right, so let's save and now if we go to the front end and reload, there it is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just add the rest of the products. Just to save a little time, I'm going to do this off camera, basically just repeat what we did here for the three other products. All right, guys, so I added the rest of the project uh, products. Now, I did mess up with the manufacturer and I put Behringer when it should actually be Technics, but that's fine. I just chose I just chose Behringer as the, the manufacturer for the turntable. Uh, now we need to add these to the, the home page. So let's go to extensions and go to modules. And let's see, featured home page edit. And we're just going to add the rest of these. All right, we'll save. And now if we go to our home page and reload, we have all of our products and we have our description pages, our images. I also chose some related pro uh, products and so on. All right. So let's uh, let's change the colors because we want this and all the buttons to be red. So this is the only file that we actually have to edit. So we want to go to the CSS, which is going to be. Uh, let's see, it should be in. In system. No. Oh, it's going to be in catalog and then view theme default and style sheet. All right, so we have a style sheet dot CSS. Uh, what I'm going to do is bring it to the desktop. And let's go ahead and minimize this. And here it is right here. So I'm going to edit with, let's say, sublime text. 
We can use any code editor. And we basically have some colors to search for and replace. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, replace. And we want this hexadecimal value. And we're going to change it to this one. All right, so I'm going to say replace all. All right, the next one, we're going to search for this value. And we're going to replace them all with this one. Okay, so that replace that. Let's do it again, replace. And now we're going to search for this one and replace with this one. Replace all and then one more. And again, these files will be available so you don't have to manually do this. And replace it with that, replace all and then we're going to save this and then just re-upload it. All right, and then we'll go back to our site and reload. And nothing. Let's do a control F5. That clears the cache. So now we have our red nav bar. Okay, so we're almost there, guys. Now let's do the slideshow. So we're going to go to, uh, let's see, where was it? Lay, uh, banners. And let's create a new banner. And we'll just call this DJ Banner. Make sure it's enabled. And then for the images, I'm going to make those available for you guys. So you'll have a folder called slide and slide one, two, and three. So we want to go ahead and add those. Title, let's just say slide one, and we'll change the image. Let's go ahead and upload those images. All right, and we're going to choose slide one. You can put a link if you want as well. So let's create the next one. Let's do, where is it? Slide two. And then slide three. And let's go ahead and save that. And then to, let's see, enabled. We have to go to our extensions, I believe, and then modules. And go down to slideshow, home page, and then edit. And let's change it to DJ Banner and save. And there we go. There's our slider. Okay, very easy. Now for payment, we're going to uh, we're going to go to where is it? Is it extensions? If you can't find something in here, chances are it's an extension. So payments. And you can see there's a ton of options. Uh, Authorize.net is a really good one, but obviously you need an account with these companies. Um, cash on delivery you'll see is enabled by default and everything else is disabled, but we're going to go to PayPal payment standard. And let's see, install. Okay, once we install it, we can edit it. And then you can put your your PayPal email address there. You can choose sandbox mode if you want, which is kind of like just testing. Uh, and you have some other stuff here, but let's make sure that this is enabled and we'll click save. All right. So now they should be able to use PayPal. So I'm pretty sure that's it, guys. I mean, let's go ahead and just test out the, the, the login system and so on. Um, so let's say we want to add this to the cart. All right, and then we'll go to view cart. Oh, the coupons. If you want to add a coupon, you can go to where is it? Coupons. And you can see there's a 10% one already created. The code is 2222. Uh, let's go ahead and let's actually change that to, uh, we'll say, 10%. And you can see it's already 10%. And let's make sure you can choose specific products or leave leave it for all of them. You can choose specific categories. All right, let's go ahead and enable it for everything. And then if we go to our front end 
and we say 10% apply coupon. And now it's 89.10. All right. Uh, and then shipping, you can choose that stuff. Let's go to checkout. And let's go ahead and, and create an account. All right. So we'll say register account, continue. And then I'm going to just put everything in here. All right. So I just added everything to save some time. I'm going to pick a password. Okay. We can also use a newsletter if we want. Uh, but I'm just going to click this checkbox and click continue. Okay, delivery details. We'll click continue, shipping, flat rate, continue. And you can see we have the PayPal option. So we'll continue. And it gives us a summary. We can say confirm order and it should redirect us to PayPal. All right, I'm, I can't actually make a purchase because I can't use my account to purchase from my account, but it'll go through this and it'll add the, the customer and their orders in your back end so you can see uh, what they've purchased. All right, so really cool. But we're just going to go back. And that's pretty much it. We have a full functioning e-commerce site that we did in what less than an hour. Um, now, one thing I want to mention is the pages down here, for instance, about us and so on. If you want to change those, you can go to let's see marketing, I believe. No, that's not it. Information. All right. And you see the about us. You can edit that and so on your delivery information, your privacy policy, which they had to agree to. You can edit that here as well. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found this informative and maybe you'll use this in the future. You can see there's reports. There's just there's a there's way more stuff than I can I can go into, uh, but that's the basics of it. We created a basic working e-commerce site. So that's it, guys. If you like this, please leave a like, please subscribe or, or and uh, you know, comment, whatever you can do. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next project.